Hi, am I in the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? Don, I got you. Don, Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? You put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, this a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's that grounded, I don't trust these ceilings Spread across your nose, and I'm on your air Highest next on the cloud, am I in the air? Sunday night's prime time, I flex my bed of Ultron Transform to DX Don, Mega and Austin You probably think I'm nice, cause I slow like a stream To your wireless device, and the smoke full of steam on any given night, I'll show up like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best about I, tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing on? Am I on the air? On the air. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega and I'm your host and I'm so happy that you're back. You're ready to rock and you're ready to join me once again as we get caught up with all the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news, television, movies, non-spoiler reviews. You come right here to Am I on the Air? It's season 26, it's episode 2 and tonight's show is titled I Am Titanium. We are broadcasting live from the Red Dragons Radio Studios here on a Monday. It is January the 9th, 2023, and yes, it is a Monday, and yes, we are back to our regularly scheduled program. As you know, the last couple weeks have been crazy, because two episodes ago, it was the end of December, we had a lot of stuff going on, New Year's, Christmas, everything, lots of stuff. So we did the show late on a Wednesday. Then the following week, it was New Year's, and there was still a ton of stuff going on. So we did the show again on a Wednesday. And I've been trying to sync this up and get back to a normal Monday night, and I finally have achieved that. So welcome 2023 to me and getting back to our normally scheduled time and place. Um, And it almost didn't happen. It almost didn't happen because, man, I got sick as hell this past weekend. I believe I had the flu. Uh, at the moment there, I was a little worried I had COVID <laughs> and, uh, you can probably hear it in my voice. I don't think I'm a hundred percent still. Um, but I turned out I did not have COVID. I went and got tested and I was all good, but it pretty much had the flu. I had a temperature of like 102, 103 at times. Uh, I felt stiff as a board. I was tired as hell. I slept like 12 hours on Saturday. Um, it was a crazy weekend, man. It also went by in a flash. I didn't feel like I got to enjoy anything because I was too damn sick. So wasn't sure if I can get on here and do the show, but I'm ready and I'm ready to rock. I got a couple of non-spoiler movie reviews for you guys. Of course, a couple TV shows to talk about, and then we'll get through the news of the week, basically January 5th through January 9th. So not a ton to talk about um, because this isn't even a full week because we did last week's show, like I said, on a Wednesday and now it's Monday. So we'll get you on through and I hope you enjoy. I know I'm ready to go. So let's start with our non-spoiler movie reviews and we'll start off with the biggest new movie of the weekend. And that is Megan or M3 Gan for those of you that see the way it's typed out on Twitter and on social media. <laughs> uh, a brilliant toy company, Roboticist, uses artificial intelligence to develop Megan, a lifelike doll programmed to emotionally bond with her newly orphaned niece. But when the doll's programming works too well, she becomes overprotective of her new friend and terrifying results ensue. So, this is the new movie from Blumhouse. This movie did very, very well over the weekend. I knew it would. I saw some people predicting, ah, it'll be lucky to hit 15 to 20 mil. I was like, nope, it's going to surpass that, and it'll do it nicely, and it sure as hell did. $30 million in its debut. And, um, And just to give you some context behind that, this movie only cost $12 million. That's it. 12 mil Blumhouse knows how to get it done, right? They make the movies very, very low budget, but they look good and they're profitable. And then they come out and they have these big openings. They make all their money back and everybody's very, very happy. So $12 million budget, $30 million opening, and that's just domestic. So congratulations to Megan bringing in 
all the money at this point, all the money. And uh, so the box office has been doing pretty damn well uh, with this coming out now, kicking off 2023 strong. Of course, Avatar is still killing it. But we're talking about Megan right now. And um, uh, what I'll say about this is this movie is definitely a niche of a lot of different things, right? It's not such a straight up horror movie. It definitely is like a little science fiction-y. It's a little thriller-y. Uh, it's even got a comedy, right? Like the way Megan kind of talks to people sometimes and the way she handles certain situations. Uh, it could be comical. And um, I liked it. I liked the way the movie played out. I wish there would have been some bigger surprises. I will say that. I This is a movie where I feel like over the course of the couple trailers that came out, you saw pretty much all the kills that happened in this movie. Every kill that pretty much happened. There's not a ton of them, but the, when the kills do happen, it's pretty much the stuff you see in the trailer. So there was no real shocker there. Um, it is a PG 13 movie. So that also felt, I felt like held it back because they, they couldn't go too crazy with it. I would have preferred a rated R, but overall I had a lot of fun with it. I thought the, the girl that plays Megan is, is, is incredible. She's outstanding. Um, Jenna Davis is her voice. Uh, and, uh, then there's, um, Amy Donald who does the body and, uh, incredible, incredible work. I love that Ronnie Chang popped up in this. I always love when he pops up in things. Violet McGraw is the little girl, uh, that loses her parents. And of course you got Allison Williams. Um, so it's always good to see her. She's definitely finding her niche in these kind of little low budget horror movies. Uh, but Blumhouse does it again, man. I would definitely recommend to check it out if you like the trailer and you think it looks interesting. Do it. Uh, this movie reminded me a lot of the Child's Play reboot that came out a couple years ago. Because it's pretty much the same concept, except Child's Play went rated R and there's some really good kills in that one. So Megan might have a new uh, thing or two to learn from that movie. Um, but if you did like Megan and maybe you hadn't seen that Child's Play reboot, I think you should definitely check it out because it's definitely in the same wheelhouse. Um, but yeah, overall I would give Megan three out of five stars. I had a good time with it. Uh, I would not rush back out to the theater to see it again. I'll probably buy it when it's on sale. Um, but yeah, I had fun with it and I would definitely recommend, uh, uh, for anybody to really check it out. If, if it sounds like something you might be interested in. And then my second movie I saw, and this one came out a couple months back, um, and I just now got to it because we were chilling over the weekend. Like I said, I was sick and my daughter really wanted to watch something and couldn't really get off the couch. So we went on the Netflix and we were flipping around, found a movie called Home Team. And Home Team had been in my queue for many months now and we just hadn't had a chance to really watch it yet. Um, but it stars Kevin James and and I love Kevin James. You can say what you will about him. But King Queens is my all-time favorite comedy show. I love King Queens and I love Kevin James. And I was really anxious, you know, I see him as the lead and I'm like, okay, I'm down. Happy Madison production, of course, Adam Sandler involved uh, with a lot of the same people you would expect, right? You got Rob Schneider, uh, Adam Sandler's wife, Jackie, plays in this, Gary Valentine, um, and Taylor Lautner pops up in this. But this one here is actually a true story. Uh, two years after the Super Bowl win, when NFL head coach Sean Payton is suspended, he goes back to his hometown and finds himself reconnecting with his 12-year-old son, by coaching his Pop Warner football team. So yeah, so this is based on a true story where um, Kevin James plays Sean Payton, a real-life NFL coach, uh, who ended up getting suspended for the year. And so when he gets suspended, he goes down. I forget where this takes place, but uh, he goes back home <laughs> to see his son play. His son plays in a little Pop Warner football team. And he goes to check it out, right? And, of course, a lot of people are starstruck and everything. But the son, of course, has that strained relationship with his dad. He hasn't seen him too much. Uh, Taylor Lautner is the football coach. And then they end up asking um, Kevin James' character to, you know, would he like to help kind of co-coach the team? Uh, because, of course, it's a very Mighty Ducks kind of story where they can't win for shit. Um, and so he's going to come in. He's going to help coach them and see where they could take it, right? Overall... This is a fun little movie. Um, you know, this was a good little family flick. It was only rated PG. Um, this is why we put it on. Cause like I guess we were looking for something as a family to watch that we didn't have to worry about. And, uh, this is a, you know, harmless little, like I said, mighty ducks, uh, you know, little rascals, like <laughs> bad news bears. It's just that kind of like little kid, you know, football team, 
can't really win, getting coached up to do some good stuff and have some laughs along the way. So I dug it. I dug it. I thought it was a fun little time uh, for being in a little Netflix film, and I'll give it its love right here. So Home Team, I'd give three out of five. Uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. So there you go there. All right, over on TV, I don't have anything new that I haven't talked about already, but I did want to touch on a couple finales. So, excuse me, Tulsa King. So Tulsa King season one finale just happened this past Sunday. Phenomenal. This is still one of my favorite shows of the year. Such a great show and an amazing finale. I loved it, and I'm super sad that I got to wait God knows how long to get season two. So check out Tulsa King, all episodes, all nine episodes now streaming on Paramount plus I finished kaleidoscope. Super fun. I really, really dug this show as well too. And especially the automatic shuffling from Netflix to just give me whatever episode, uh, looking back on it now, I wish I would have kind of watched it in a chronological order. The jumping around didn't work for me as much. Cause I felt like certain things got spoiled. that didn't need to be, Um, And I would have liked to just kind of uncover the story as I went, like any normal television show, but that's just me. But uh, overall, I did still really, really like this show and would highly recommend it. So check out Kaleidoscope over on Netflix. And after all these months, I finally finished Andor over on Disney Plus, the Star Wars show Andor. I was several episodes behind. Being sick gives you a lot of time to, to do some stuff. So I finished it finally. And my final verdict is still meh. Uh, I just don't get it. I don't get the hype behind the show. The show was tricky to follow. It was boring as shit. I just never thought I'd feel that way about a Star Wars property. And I know, I know, I know again, I see a lot of you online saying this is the best thing Star Wars has ever done. And people love it. And people are like so excited for season two. I'm happy for you. I really, really am because I wish that I felt that same way. I really do because I wanted to love this. Um, I like Rogue One, but this show was just bleh to me, man. There wasn't much joy out of watching this show. This was a chore. This was a task. Like, when I was going through it, my wife was like, why are we even bothering with this still? And I'm like, we just got to finish it. We just have to. (laughs) And again, like a job, man. It was just like, we got two more episodes left. We just got to do it. So we did it, and it was still bleh. Um, so yeah, so that's what I got guys. Megan now in theaters, three out of five stars home team. Check it out on Netflix, three out of five stars, Tulsa King best show on TV right now. Check out all the episodes on Paramount plus kaleidoscope, all the episodes on Netflix and, and, or all episodes streaming over on Disney plus. All right. That's what I got from a review standpoint. Let's get on over to the box office coming in. Number 10, it's the menu, which once again is now streaming on HBO max. I just rewatched it the other night. Such a good movie. I love it. Number nine is Violent Night. Number eight is Babylon. Number seven is The Whale. Number six is I Want to Dance with Somebody. Number five is Wakanda Forever. Number four is A Man Called Otto. Number three is Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Number two is Megan. Like I said, making 30.2 million, beating them expectations. Uh, Amazing job. And coming in number one, once again, was Avatar, The Way of Water, man. Still number one. I think this is now the fifth week in a row. Fourth or fifth week in a row, man. And it has now hit the $1.7 billion club. $1.7. It is now officially the seventh biggest movie of all time. Isn't that crazy? If it gets into the top five, that means James Cameron would have three of the top five movies of all time in the billion two plus billion dollar club. That's incredible. So congratulations there, Avatar Two, still kicking it down. Um, but yeah, hell of a box office. So there you guys go. That's our box office. Let's switch gears. Let's get into our news of the week. We got our first look, new poster and new trailer. For Renfield, I remember when I reported on this movie being put together last year, I didn't know what kind of movie they were making. We had heard it was going to be Nicolas Cage's Dracula, along with Nicholas Holt as a character named Renfield. And in my mind, I saw one movie. And then the trailer came out the other day, and holy crap, it is not the movie I thought in my head. And thank God, because the movie that this trailer is giving me is totally what I want. Uh, Renfield, it looks amazing. Nicholas Holt is basically, 
uh, the servant to Dracula. He gets him his food. He gets him everything he needs. And he's a little tired of it. But what can you do, man, when your boss is Dracula? And yes, it's Nicolas Cage. Bringing it down. This looks like a very comedic, action-heavy take. Uh, um, Aquafina is in this. There's some cool powers. There's a lot of gore. I love this trailer. It's awesome. In theaters, April 14th is Renfield. We have the new poster. We have the trailer. Check it out. It's going to be awesome. Very, very excited for this. Another movie I'm super excited about got a new trailer, and that is You People. You People premieres on Netflix in just a couple weeks, January 27th, with Jonah Hill and Eddie Murphy. And this new trailer is incredible because you get the full gist of the story. Um, Obviously, long story short, is Jonah Hill dating a black woman and then trying to get permission from Eddie Murphy and Nia Long to marry their daughter. And, of course, the racism ensues, but in a very comedical, uh, funny way. So I think this looks great. I'm hoping to get an early copy of this from Netflix so I could review it. My fingers are crossed because I'm super anticipating this movie. So let's go check out the new trailer for you people. Dana White's new show power slap league has been de- delayed amid the controversy. And you know what that controversy is? He took his show a little too literal and he slapped his wife. So <laughs> after power slapping his wife, his show has now been delayed. So, you know, I, I, I don't know, man. It's crazy shit out there these days, man. Stupid Dana White. Uh, Nicole Kidman has joined the cast of Taylor Sheridan's new Paramount Plus series. Look at Taylor Sheridan just cleaning up over at Paramount Plus. He's like, you guys want a show? You guys want a show? How about another show? We love Paramount Plus should just be renamed Taylor Plus at this point. But yes, they got a new show and Nicole Kidman, of course, jumping in on on that one. We have the new trailer for Poker Face, which is new uh, mystery, crime-solving mystery from Ryan Johnson, of course, director of Knives Out and Glass Onion. Uh, This is another kind of whodunity type of show that's a Peacock exclusive. So this is coming later this month on Peacock, and I'm super excited for this one. So check out the new trailer for Poker Face. Um, A lot of rumors going around still with DC. Uh, There was something that came out that said Wonder Woman will not be included in anything in the first three years. Of course, James Gunn tweeted and said false. (laughs) So I love that he's still debunking stuff. uh, And he's still stating that we'll get some DC news before the end of the month. So we'll definitely keep you posted on that. Benedict Cumberbatch is set to lead a new Netflix limited drama called Eric. Devotion has hit Paramount+. Plus, So... Um, I love that Paramount Plus be popping them movies out. Uh, so I'll be watching this. I actually didn't get to the theater to see Devotion, so I'll be checking it out on Paramount Plus, and you should too. Disney Plus is set to add some IMAX signature sound to their upcoming movies that they're going to be streaming. So they're going to have a nice little IMAX section, and you can check out a movie list right now of what's coming there. Uh, James Gunn also announces that he's working on a new DC TV show. He's writing it. So not only is he writing the new Superman movie, but he's doing this new unannounced DC TV show. We don't know any info about it. Don't know who the character is. Don't know nothing. We just know he's working on something. So James Gunn, a very, very busy man. Lisa Rinna is set to exit Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after eight seasons. Over on SNL, Aubrey Plaza and Michael B. Jordan are going to be the first host of the 2023 episode. So let's go to great host for the, uh, to kick off 2023. Astrid and Lily save the world will not be returning for season two over on the sci-fi network. Please hold them and take a drink of my drink. Cause I'm about to start choking. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm James Lovino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Sam, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's alternate side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing. Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. Whoa. 
Sorry about that. Told you my voice isn't fully back yet. And the more I talk, the more I feel like I'm going to start choking. Um, so yeah, so Astrid and Lily Save the World is not returning over on Sci-Fi. Warner Brothers Discovery's content bloodbath is over, says the CFO. We're done with that chapter. So, you know, they've been cutting a lot of shows. They've been cutting a lot of stuff off the streaming app. They're saying they're done. And they've done what they needed to do, and we're moving forward. So, hopefully, they are. Truth be told, we have the Season 3 trailer. Gabriel Union is joining the cast this season. Um, So, I like this show. Um, I loved Season 1. Started season two, it wasn't that good, so never finished it. And then I watched the trailer here for season three the other day. It looks pretty good, man, so I'm going to have to jump back into this one. Harlem, season two. Um, Lorel Howery and Sherry Shepard appear in the upcoming trailer, so there you go. Um, like I said, Avatar Way of Water has officially surpassed Top Gun Maverick to become the highest grossing film of 2022. It did that several hundred million ago, but, you know, as the week went on, I just want to let you know officially the news there. Um, Like I said, Avatar is now officially the seventh biggest movie of all time, so it just continues to climb that ladder. 911 Lone Star will be premiering back on Fox on January 24th. Looking forward to that. Gladiator 2 looks like it's moving forward. He's been talking about this for a while. And now it's happening. Yes, Ridley Scott says that they are casting for the anticipated sequel. I don't know who wants Gladiator 2 when it really has nothing to do with the first movie. But we'll let it be. We'll let it be. We have the trailer for a new movie called Sick. And this is from Blumhouse. This is going to be a Peacock exclusive. So check this out. It's actually from the writers of Scream. So it's a new pandemic-themed slasher. And we'll see how that one pans out. Um, Going to Peacock makes me a little weary. But you know what? Sometimes the streamers... They make out just fine. So going back to Avatar, the funny thing is, 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 you know, there was these articles that came out before Way of Water dropped where James Cameron was saying it was going to need to make close to $2 billion to even be a profitable movie, which I was like, get the fuck out of here. There's no way you need that much money. <clears throat> what I guess he hasn't elaborated on this, but from my understanding now, the reason he was looking for so much money is because the fact is, is he shot two and three back to back. Three obviously has not come out yet. He's already started making four. So that's time and money that has already been spent. And I guess he's spent about $1.5 billion on making what he's made so far. And since way of water has already surpassed the $1.5 million mark, they're saying, Hey, uh, it's profitable. So now James Cameron's saying, yep, the movies are profitable and I'm going to have to finish those other films now and more are going to be on the way. So I guess that's the, just the amount they needed for him to be able to completely finish all the visual effects and everything for three and then kind of wrap up four. So yeah, very interesting, man, to, to see that a movie needed to make about $1.5 billion to say it was profitable. But it makes more sense when you look at it as he's made three films back-to-back rather than just one movie needing that much. Because I saw the budget on Way of Water is about three fifty, So it would make sense if you think of each film being about three to $400 million. That would put some sense to where we're looking at from a budget standpoint. In some good news over the weekend, Netflix finally announced that they are going to be renewing Wednesday for season two. Uh, this was a lot of question marks around this one for a while. We were waiting and waiting and waiting. We knew how big of a hit Wednesday was. So we're like, why has this not been renewed? No full story as to why it took so long, but now we know for sure it is coming back for season two over on Netflix. So big congratulations there. That's awesome. We have the trailer for Free Ridge, um, which uh, highlights a sibling rivalry and a cursed box. Yes, it's the upcoming teen comedy, um, which is also a spinoff to the fan favorite on my block. Gen V has already been announced for a season two, and this is the boys spinoff that they're going to be doing that takes place at the college. Um, So I guess they're so happy with season one already that they're already saying we're going to do season two. So let's go. I'm excited for this show for sure. Anna DeArmas is teasing that she's going to have some fight scenes with Keanu Reeves in her upcoming John Wick spinoff, Ballerina. So, Ooh. 
Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, so really cool news. I love John Wick. I love those movies. I love Anna de Armas. I'm super excited for this spinoff. I am so sold. Let's go. Uh, Bob Odenkirk's new AMC series, uh, is moving along and it's just been given a new name along with some first look photos. So you can check those out if you're interested. Um, the upcoming series originally titled straight man is now going to be called lucky Hank. That's right. Lucky Hank based on the novel straight man by Richard Russo. Lucky Hank is a midlife crisis tale that takes place on a fictional college campus in the Pennsylvania Rust Belt. Ona Kirk stars as William Henry Hank Devereaux Jr. The unlucky chairman of a college English department. Um, yeah. Doesn't sound very exciting based off that <laughs> description, but I love Bob Oden Kirk and hopefully this will look pretty cool by the time it comes out. AMC has officially scrapped a new sci-fi comedy called Damascus. Um, and that, so, uh, don't, didn't know much too much on that, but they pulled the plug officially on it, which would have starred, uh, station 19 alum, Okiriakit Odendan Odadawan. Oh, man, these names these days are just getting harder and harder. Fire Country has been renewed for season two over at CBS. So there you go. That's awesome. It's their top rated most watched new series. So congratulations. Tim Blake Nelson has joined the high flying cast of Dune Part 2, um, which feels like a very late addition. They filmed Dune a while ago and he was not a part of the cast. So makes you wonder who he's playing. 50 Cent says he's working with uh, Eminem on an 8-mile TV show. Very interesting. So we'll see if that actually comes to fruition. Nicolas Cage says he was not contacted to return as the voice for Spider-Noir in Across the Spider-Verse. He says he would have loved to. He loves the character. He thinks he's a great character. Uh, but he was not contacted. So either Spider-Man Noir is not in the new movie um, or they just didn't go with Nicolas Cage. which would have been real, real sad. Real, real sad. Uh, we have two new posters for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. They're up on our Twitter page and our Instagram page. And the new trailer dropped last night. That's right, baby. The new trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This movie comes out in about a month. And this new trailer was awesome. It was so good. So good. High stakes. This is not your typical Ant-Man kind of movie. This is not the hearty har har that the number one and number two were. This is dire. This is high stakes, high sci-fi. And uh, I'm very interested to see how this movie plays out. The kickoff to uh, phase five right around the corner. So check out that trailer and the two new posters. Very cool. Speaking of more trailers, Paramount Plus dropped the first trailer for Rise of the Pink Ladies. This is the Grease prequel. We've been talking about this one for a couple of years. And uh, this new show will debut on April 6th, once again on Paramount+. Plus. Carnival Row Season 2 has dropped its final trailer for the series' epic conclusion. We have the trailer for True Spirit, which stars Tegan Croft. She plays Raven on uh, Titan, so it's good to see her do something kind of outside of that. Along with Anna Paquin, and this is leading Netflix's new inspiring drama, so check that out. Uh, J Joel McHale confirms that they're getting ready to start filming the community movie. So that's pretty cool there. Uh, the workaholics movie has been canceled. That's right. Adam Devine issued a deeply, but hurt statement. Uh, but they are shopping it around to other, um, outlets because this was going to be a Paramount plus exclusive. Um, but they've passed. So now he says they're going to shop it around and hope to do the workaholics movie. So we'll see. I know a lot of people were looking forward to that one. We also have the season four trailer for you. I love this show so much. And I was so excited to see this trailer and it is awesome. And I can't wait to get back to Joe doing his Joe things. You season four comes out in just a couple of weeks next early next month, February 9th, I believe for the first half of the season. And then March 9th for the second half of the season. Um, Let's see here. Yep, February nine, nine, nine. Yes, we have your first look at the Fatal Attraction TV show that's coming out, starring Joshua Jackson 
and Lizzie Kaplan. This is coming to Paramount Plus. Get your first look. Photos and the show will officially debut in April. Peyton List um, from Cobra Kai. She must solve her own murder in an upcoming Paramount Plus series, School Spirits. This will be premiering in March, and we have the teaser trailer for that. Diana Jenkins is leaving Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after just one season. Star Trek Picard Season 3 might not be the final season after all. After all. <laughs> As Patrick Stewart says, there are doors left open. So, ooh, they're saying it's the final season, but is it? We'll have to wait and see. Kiefer Sutherland's Rabbit Hole spy thriller is coming soon to Paramount+. Plus. Look at Paramount+, Plus, man, just dropping show after show after show. Coming to play Paramount+, Plus. I'm very impressed. So yeah, Rabbit Hole with Kiefer Sutherland coming soon. New spy thriller. Pitch Perfect, Bumper in Berlin. Officially renewed for season two over on Peacock. I love this. Uh, Over the holidays, we binged this show in like one day. It's fun. It's a stupid ass show, but it's fun. And I'm glad to see it come back for a second season. I'm there, man. That's awesome. Inside Job has been canceled to Netflix, reversing a season two renewal. So again, a show has been renewed and then canceled. Uh, I just don't get it. Megalopolis is in peril amid ballooning budget and the crew exodus. That's right. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola, we've talked about this movie before. It's called Megalopolis. He wanted to make this movie. This was a dream project of his. He's actually paying to make this movie. But it sounds like it is a clusterfuck. They're halfway through making the movie and in the last week lost all their key creative talent. They lost the entire visual effects team back in December. Um, Excuse me. The uh, crew is leaving. People are quitting. Nobody wants to work on it. Um, But he's determined to finish it. So we will see what happens with Megalopolis. Oh, man. Okay. And uh, that's it. Yep, that's it, because we're ending off because of the new uh, Ant-Man the Wasp trailer. Like I said, that literally just dropped right before I started recording. I was waiting for this to drop before I recorded, because I knew it was coming tonight. We had the two new posters, and I was like, give me the trailer. And remember, the movie comes out February 17th. I will also be in 3D. Looking forward to this movie. It's going to be so awesome. And don't forget, tonight, or no, sorry, not t- tomorrow night is the Golden Globes. So for those of you who wanted to see the first big um, award show of the year is going to be live on NBC and Peacock hosted by Gerard Carmichael. So check out the golden globes. All right. So that'll do it for me on this new episode. Look at that. We're at 30 minutes. Exactly. 30 minutes. We did it. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Well, I got to get out of here first. Start choking again. And I start puking or something. Cause I'm going to force myself to throw up because <laughs> I'm talking too damn much, man. Go rest, Don Mega. Go rest. All right. So thank you so much for watching or listening. See, I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore. Thank you for listening to this new episode. I can't make myself laugh. I'm going to start joking again. Thank you for listening. Amiontheair.com is our official webpage. Make sure you like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash amiontheair. Follow us on Twitter at simply amiontheair. You can follow me on Twitter at dxdonmega. Uh, make sure you li- like us on Apple Podcast. Leave us a five-star review. Subscribe to us. If Apple's not your thing, get us on Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn. We're on all the podcast networks, Amazon, iHeartRadio. Just search Am I on the Air and give us a follow. Leave a review. It would really help out. Uh, you can get us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Just search Am I on the Air. Red Dragons Radio, our great affiliates over there where we're always streaming. Follow on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio. Our other great affiliates of Pop Culture Pros, follow on Twitter at Pop Culture underscore Pros. And that'll do it for me on this Monday, January the 9th, 2023. Hope you all have an amazing week. We'll see what uh, we check out this weekend, and we'll be back next week to bring you up to speed once again. So take care of yourselves and each other, and until next time, y'all, peace. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening. Red Dragons! Red Dragons!